Hello everyone, welcome to Wild, Weird and Wonderful. I'm Maureen Jager Skinner, here with the curator of the Wildlife Discovery Center, Rob Carmichael. Papa Croc. That's right, Papa that's Croc. Right. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm sorry, I used his other name, his alias. Uh, tell us who your pal is here today. We got Maximus, oh he's showing off now. Maximus is a saltwater crocodile that lives right here at the Wildlife Discovery Center along with four other species and today we're celebrating crocodiles. That's what we're all about, Croctoberfest. That is what, very interesting that Rob mentioned crocodiles. No surprise because we are at the fourth annual Croctoberfest here at the Wildlife Discovery Center. It happens every October. Today you get to watch it on TV, but next year you can come in person because we'll be back just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so uh, this is our fourth annual Croctoberfest and we have a huge crowd. Isn't this fun, guys? Yeah! They are having a blast. These guests are going to show us a few of the things they've learned today as we wander around. Um, don't be too scared, guys. This crocodile's not real, but we do have lots of real ones in here. <laughs> so Rob is going to tell us a little bit about what we have to look forward to today. Well, we've got a whole bunch of different things going on, especially for families. It's a very kid-friendly event. We have uh, kids' activities, scavenger hunts. We have lots of live alligators and crocodiles out on exhibit. Uh, we have a mounted crocodile down in our, our, our classrooms. We have tattoos for not just uh, yeah. you know, colored tattoos. <laughs> tattoos that go away. Tattoos that go away. <laughs> uh, some special guests. Uh, we've got the garden market that's open for some great food. Uh, so there's just all kinds of things going. It's all about getting a, making it, uh, more awareness for crocodile conservation because animals like Maximus are slowly disappearing in the wild. And we oh, want people to know right. how important they are for humans and for the environment too. Right, right. And it's so cool that we have this right here in our community in Lake Forest, this great event. It gets bigger every year, doesn't it? Does. It does. You know, we'll probably have, I don't know, we might have four or 500 people today, maybe more. Yep. Uh, so every year we try and make some improvements and just like I said, make it a, just a really fun event for families and kids and everyone else. We have some sponsors who we'll mention real quickly. We've got, uh, it says thanks to our sponsors. And we have Canals Auto Park. I have bought many a fine car there. Uh, Pasquazi's Home and Gardens, bought many a fine uh, plant. <laughs> there. Sunset Foods, many a shopping trip there. Uh, James LaDuke and Associates, many a beautiful home in town. Ragsdale Incorporated, many a beautiful artwork in our community. So the whole community is behind us as we celebrate Croctoberfest today. And I know what you're all thinking. Can we go in and take a look around? What do you think? Should we? Yeah! All right. We'll see you inside in a couple minutes. Here we are in a classroom where visitors are learning firsthand about all the reptiles there are to see today. So this is, tell me who you are and where you're from. I'm uh, Bobby Delaney. I'm uh, from Naperville. I'm just a volunteer here. Uh, Rob asked me to come in uh, for Croc Foberfest uh, and show off my iguana mango. Um, he's kind of a celebrity around here, so kids really love him and enjoy petting him. What's the story behind him? Mongo is a 13-year-old green iguana. Uh, he was used in children's educational programs um, up until about three years ago when the, the owner of that, that uh, educational show retired and adopted him to me. And I've been taking him to shows like this and uh, other reptile shows around the area uh, since then and showing him off and kids love him. And of course. So. Does the mango have anything to do with the fact that he's mango colored? <laughs> no, actually, that came later. <laughs> just coincidence. Yeah, just okay. coincidence. Uh, let's have these kids come on up, and you guys, he, they can pet him, right? Yeah, he's very friendly. He loves being pet. He'll sit there for hours with kids petting him and touching him. Oh, look at that. What does he feel like, kids? He's rough. He's like really Tell the camera. Tell the camera. He's like rough and bumpy. Yeah, rough and He's really like, he's not, not as bumpy as he looks, but he's he is bumpy. He's cool. It's like skin. I wish I had a pet like him. Yeah. I want a pet like him. And he's dressed up. Tell the camera. He, listen to what this boy has. A message for his mom. What he wants for I Christmas. I want a pet like him. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. We'll pass that one along to Santa. This is what these guys want for Christmas. Yeah. Of course, it is hard to uh, keep them up. So we're, we're kind of kidding because actually these are hard to uh, yeah, take care of. Yeah. Iguanas, uh, so even though they're found easily in a lot of pet stores and they're really cute and cuddly when they're little uh, they they're a lot of work it's like having a puppy for almost 10 years a lot of maintenance a lot of care a lot of attention so it takes a lot to get them to be like this mm -hmm. so. and a special owner like you yeah i wouldn't recommend it as a beginner a beginner pet you've got another pal over here what do you think of this kids tell us a little bit about this guy while the kids uh, get introduced to him <laughs> sure this is a taiwanese beauty snake it's a form of rat snake and uh, 
they're uh, yeah they're just a, a unique uh, unique kind of snake that you don't find around here in the pet trade um, that uh, when I saw it was you know fell in love with it so they're so here he, how, how old and uh, does he have a name did you say this one doesn't I don't I haven't come up with a name yet for him what do you guys suggest for him Bob, Bob? Okay. Just like me, I can go with that. There, there you go. Steve. 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 Yeah, Steve. Like Steve I, I Irwin in honor of Steve Irwin. Joe. Joe. Okay, Joe. <laughs> oh, right, right. Now, what does he feel like, kids? Well, my dad would he be freaked out right like, now. Like, 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 he feels bumpy a little. Yeah, he, he, he feels like he's slimy, but he's not. Yeah. He's thick. He kind of and he's, like he him. seems like he would be mean, but, but he's not. He's really yeah, long, yeah, too. He's the really bottom thick. looks so much he's different long. than the top. He's it's long. like a, the pattern yeah. on the bottom looks, it's yellow. Who like wants this for Christmas? <laughs> My dad was it's gonna, uh, kids are asking if they're going to be on the news. We're all going to be on a TV show on our local channel and on YouTube, so you'll have to look for yourselves. Okay. Wild, Weird, and Wonderful. Isn't that a perfect name for these animals? No. So what actually is... Let's see what else we can find. Here we have an Argus monitor. I'm not the expert to fill you in, but we are joined by the expert. Can you tell us your name and your pal? I'm Julie Tenbensel. Um, I'm local here, and this is Anubis. Um, he's a five-year-old Argus monitor. Five years old. How old is that in people terms? Um, probably, uh, no, about like maybe 40. 40? Okay. Okay. Because I'm going to live to be 100, so, you know. <laughs> okay, so why don't we, we're going to take him out now so that all the uh, visitors can meet them that are waiting. Okay. This is how you handle him. That's why don't try this at home, <laughs> obviously. Okay, guys. Just don't get near the face, okay? And hang on. Watch the tail. <laughs> it's quite a tail, isn't it? <laughs> He's just holding on right now, that's all. See how long the claws are? Look at that. Those are used to burrow. Um, they burrow in the wild. They can climb trees. They run really, really fast. And they use their tail like a third leg so they can stand on their hind legs. They look over tall grass. They run down live live prey and they're found in what uh, climate Australia. Australia yeah northern From the outback yes exactly northern Australia where it's hot and dry but they can adapt to lots of different types of, of climates and um, different areas ours is a perfect adjustment for him right yeah yeah but they they live in very large enclosures and um, in captivity uh, they need a lot of room to move and um, they have they they love to swim. They have large pools and climb. How long did they have him? I've had him for five years since he was born. Since he was born, yes. How did you come to be able to have him? Um, I actually got him from someone who breeds them. Okay. So I got him as a hatchling. Oh, neat. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, I'm a poor judge of weight, but I'm I'm gonna say like 30 pounds. Oh, so you're getting a workout holding him yeah. here. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's so going through a shed. Like like the snakes do. Yes. So do their eyes get cloudy also no. when they shed? No. They does don't. He, does he use his tail as a weapon? It, they do. Very good. They do tail whip if they feel threatened. Oh. He usually doesn't. He uses it to hang on sometimes. But in the wild, they will, and it's a very powerful tail, and it hurts. <laughs> oh. I've been tail whipped before, and it really hurts. So here, let me set him down. You guys want to move, move out of the way? How long can he live for? Um, they can live about like 10 years. So, and he's very friendly, but he'll just like wander around. Oh. Okay. Joey wanted to know how long his tongue is. Um, it's about that long. Oh, wow. Kiss. Wow, look at that. They use it to smell. To smell. Oh, to smell. Right. Do they use it to catch insects or? They do as um, as babies. I mean, they don't. Um, they do eat insects. They use their mouth to catch the insects, but okay. not the tongue. The tongue is strictly used for smelling, like well, and drinking. Right, like a snake. Okay. So, and you've been here before, so we love having yes. you come and show us as a what's his name again? Anubis. Anubis. Mm -hmm. As Anubis grows and yes. learns, and what do you guys think of him? Pretty cool. Really awesome. <laughs> 
Here we have the Nile crocodile, the second largest crocodilian on Earth and Africa's ultimate apex predator. And uh, tell us who you are and uh, what you know about this guy. My name is Nicholas DeAndre. Um, this is actually a mount that Rob had purchased uh, for the Discovery Center. If you look here, he's at, this is actually where they shot the Nile crocodile. They had to re, re uh, make the, the plastic on the side of his head so he can be mounted and not look like he had a big hole in the head. So, That's Rob. Amazing. So this is how big he was. Yes, this is exactly how big he was when they got him. It is amazing. And this is a, a crocodile that's uh, very rare. Yes. It's the sec world's second largest crocodile. The first is the saltwater crocodile in uh, Africa. So both of these you'll never find here because they have to do with saltwater and climates that we don't have. Technically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and who's your uh, pal on your uh, neck? Uh, granite Burmese python. He's about five to six years old. I've had him since he was right out of the egg. He looks pretty well behaved. Yeah, he's always well behaved. He's used to doing shows since he was a baby, so. Aww. And kids are allowed to pet him here today? Yes, they are. Kind of get to know him? Yes. Thank you very much. No problem. Here we are in the Eloa Farm Hay Barn with lots more exhibits. A fascinating place today. Um, I am joined by... Dan from the Herpetological Society. And tell us a little bit about your friend and what you do. This is Sobek. He's from the... Uh, he's an American alligator. He's still just a little guy right now. He's about the size of a five-year-old. They'll live just as long as we will. They'll live 50 to 75 years or more. Except well, in that I'm living longer than... Oh, or more. More, more, okay. or more. It, it, just like certain people, depends <laughs> right. on what's going on. <laughs> right. The oldest alligator was over 100, so oh, they can awesome. live just as long as we can. Yeah. So, realistically, though, once they get to be about his size, they have no natural enemies anymore. So, I mean, he's just, just like every other American. Give me a beer, give me a beach, and let me relax. Oh, so he's in his retirement phase. Uh, pretty much <laughs> to the point where he just doesn't care anymore. Right, right. <laughs> You guys can touch him if you want to. And uh, yeah, you guys come on over and see. This is why you're here today. You get a first hand feel. You meet these it's guys. So tame. You know, he just, he's, you could just see how he can see everything, like what you said, just like a everything we're going, going around. We're the best animals to, to these shows, too, because we're here for education, we're here for safety. We're not going to bring a mean, vicious, abused animal. We're going to bring nice ones because we want experiences like this. How often can you get close to an animal like this and see something like this and do something like this? I mean, you're in a zoo, you see something from 10 feet away, beyond it's 10 feet in the cage. This, if she wants to, she could count the scales on the animal and she can touch it as much as she wants. and. It's a unique opportunity that we do here, you know, at the farm, at the Wildlife Discovery Center. It's an opportunity you don't get other places, which is really nice. Do you like it? Do you like it? How does it feel? Yes. It, on the tummy, it feels smooth, and on the back, it feels kind of rough. Yeah. Very different from any pets you have at home. Yeah. Or that your friends have. Yeah. <laughs> Will you be telling them about this? I think, yeah. <laughs> So you do a rescue mission, and tell us a little bit about that part. All the crocodilians that are here today are confiscations from people that had them illegally in the state of Illinois. It is illegal to buy, sell, or possess crocodilians of any type. Uh, when people have them illegally, we take them in, we do the blood work, the rehabilitation, the resocialization, and the eventual re-release back into the wild. So it's... It's a labor, but it's a labor of love. How many do you have? Yeah, come on up. You guys can... That's, that's why he's here. It's okay. You're okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically, we get in between about 25 to 50 a year. 
um, uh, mostly out of people's homes or houses their owner give ups. Uh, that way the state doesn't prosecute or anything if the people give them up voluntarily. Oh. Unfortunately, some people do dump them into the wild, and then we have to actually go out there in boats and trap them and hunt them down. Because the problem is, if this animal was in your house for five years, it only knows you as the food god. It only knows you as the food giver. And then when you dump it into a river and a little kid goes fishing, it sees that kid and says, Oh, you're They'll supposed to me feed food. me. Right. right. You're supposed to feed me. So they zoos and stuff that you see that are broad and they're in captivity and then they go out back into their nature wild. Um, how is that with the alligator and the crocodiles? That's one of the biggest challenges we have to do is re-socialization. Uh, we start them off with going in, like if this guy came into the facility, first they would go through a, a two-month quarantine period just to make sure he's healthy, make sure everything's okay with him physically, blood work, everything else. Then he would go in with other same size animals. Just like same size, same year in school, same things like that. We'd watch and interact with each other. If he's very aggressive, we'd move him with guys a step bigger than him. Because just like putting the freshmen in with the seniors, you learn your place really fast. Uh, if he's too timid, we bring him back a, a size. So all of a sudden, they have a three-footer in with a bunch of two-footers. Well, then he gains his self-confidence and says, hey, I can eat, I can fight, I can do this. And over time, they learn how to deal with each other and interact with each other again. And the last couple months they're with us, they actually never see a human being. It's all dead drops for food and everything else. Because we don't want them to associate people with food anymore. So in their cage, you'd suddenly drop some food in one side. They actually have to fight over it with each other and figure out, okay, I'm the, getting this, I'm getting that. And then they re-release. That's why some of them learn it very quickly. We can re-release them right away. Other ones have to be with us for some time until they understand it. Because some of them are just so scared and so timid because of the abuses they suffered, or some are so violent because of the abuses they suffered, that it changes. Find that maybe have been abandoned by the parents. Like, how do you guys handle? Well, how do you handle? Up here, they don't abandon. Well, they're not native up here, so they're not going to have babies like that up here in the wild on their own. So, typically in the wild, though, you want to avoid baby alligators. Uh, baby alligators make a couple different noises, and they make a chirping sound when they're little. And if you hear that chirping noise, any adult, whether it's their parent or not, will come and defend that baby. So you don't want to mess with a little baby alligator. So cute, but stay away. <laughs> okay. Only visit them at yeah. Crocktoberfest and Reptile Rampage. <laughs> reptile Rampage, yeah. Reptile Rampage up in uh, March. Yep. Crocktoberfest here in April or October. October. And the Wild Discovery Center is always open, too. They always have a whole bunch of nice exhibits up here. You can't always get this close with them, but right. you can still see a lot of fun stuff up here during the rest of the year. Right. And who needs Oktoberfest when we have Crocktoberfest? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is much more fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, now, we also have some other. These are your other um, uh, uh, pets. Okay. These, these are alive. These are our quarter rounds right now. This is the safest way that you can get up close to some of the other species. Oh, she can look. She can look. Because uh, like this, a Nile crocodile doesn't have the temperament that an American alligator does to be held like that and everything else. So this way, it is a live animal. They go into a, like, a, they basically just relax in there. They know that they can't hurt you. You can't hurt them. But literally, she could stand here all day and count every single plate. And again, this is what we can do for some of the more aggressive animals. And she animals. has her own little version here. She Did does. And it's today? got its own little babies. <laughs> that is so cute. What is that? Crocodile. That's right. Is that a crocodile? Is that your very own crocodile? Mm -hmm. That's very cool. That's it kind of feels. Yeah. <laughs> best way to have That's them. Yeah. Best way to have them. That's the best way to have them. They don't belong in people's houses, apartment buildings, things like that, unfortunately. Here we are now with an all time favorite every year here at Croctoberfest. And tell us who you are, Jim, and who your pal is. Okay, I'm Jim Nessie with Cold Blooded Creatures. This is my friend Bubba, who's trying to turn around here. Been oh, real active here today. today. Yeah, he's been real active. You know what? Let me just get him because I don't want him sure. to hang on for a second. Sure. This is Bubba, and Jim's grabbing him for us. He's a little camera shy today, but he's a great guy. He'll probably work with us. Sure, no problem. We understand. Okay, so Jim, tell us a little bit, for those who don't know, about Bubba. All right, well, Bubba is, best we can tell, he's about 10 years old, came in as an unwanted pet rescue um, about eight years ago. So best guess, he was two or three when I got him. He was 32 inches long at the time when I brought him into the facility. I brought in a group of gators. I called it Gator Daycare. Are you ready for this? I love Are you ready that. for this? I had the bully. <laughs> I had the scaredy cats in the corner. I had the clicks picking on certain individuals. What does this remind us of? Real daycare. School. And real school. And guess what? He was the class valedictorian. Was he? Yeah, they're all individuals. He's incredible. And you're like the proud papa. Oh, I am. I am. In fact, when I worked with Steve Irwin, he used to call me Bubba's dad. Aww. 
Steve was a great guy. I don't don't mean to get sidetracked. Yeah, but what I a, could tell he was. A what great a great guy. guy. Same guy off camera. Yeah. But anyway, back to my friend Bubba here. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of educational programs. We do about 400 programs a year. Most of them he attends, depending on the logistics of getting him in and out, because he's big, as you can see. Yes. Currently, he is. is nine feet long, weighs 250 pounds. Oh my so he's goodness. a big boy. And last year, we actually shipped the last of the group of gators that came in. We had to ship out Bubba's girlfriend. Her name? Oh. Cruella. <laughs> I love it. Cruella was grumpy every day. That fit. Good she, name. She was grumpy every day. We shipped her out. She's actually on a permanent vacation <laughs> in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at Alligator Adventure. Okay. So she was, she was tough. Every yeah. time I went in the pool to work with Bubba, she would circle around behind me and try to ambush me. Oh, no. So she was tough. So right. uh, we shipped her out. And in fact, I warned the guys. I said, listen, when you get her out of the crate down there in Myrtle Beach, pay attention. Well, when they got her out of the crate, she almost got one of the guys. She oh, was goodness. really tough. She was tough. But this guy is the total opposite yes. of the way she was. He's real passive, real re laid back, real relaxed. And, you know, you talk about the things I've been seeing. I've been very fortunate to have this unique relationship with him because... I see windows into his head. And what I mean by that, being that he lives at my facility at home, mm -hmm. and we're always working, we're going places, he's so smart, I've watched him problem solve. He problem solves. Really? Now people would say to me, that's impossible to get a little brain. Right. Well, guess what? Unlike us, he uses his whole brain. Right. They're incredible, absolutely incredible. The things that he does, and the way he figures things out would blow you away. And now they're finding out, too, another amazing thing. And I don't want to run over the, all over the place, but mm -hmm. sure, this is really amazing. Their blood, mm -hmm. their blood is incredible. There's proteins in their blood. Their blood is literally indestructible. They don't get cancer. Their blood kills the most tenacious infections on the planet. This could be the new frontier for human medicine. Wow. These, you know, it wasn't an accident, like I said, that they've seen the dinosaurs come and go. There's a reason for everything. And what I've seen from, you know, people would call them primitive. They're not primitive. Prehistoric they are. Mm -hmm. Primitive they're not. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, earlier to me when we were talking, there are two types of alligators. Okay. Yeah, there's the, there's the North American alligator, like my friend Bubba. Okay. All right, Bubba, it's not, uh, wait, you're not done with, we're, we're still interviewing. We're almost hold done, it, Bubba. We're, we're doing an interview. Uh, wait, hold it, hold it, wait, hold it. Can you sit for a minute, just a second, good. Just a second. Sorry about that. He just needed a little love. Uh, right? Yeah, he does. He does. You know, going through an insecure, you know, just like all stars, they yeah. go through their insecure phase. And yeah. You got to work them through it. Well, <laughs> as you can see, and people have said to me, you know, that's a dangerous animal. I said, let me explain to you. And I'm telling you the truth. In all the shows that I do, I've had the most problem with people coming up to him. I've had people kick him. Oh, all kinds of things. This? That's so I shocking. have it is, but unfortunately, yeah. it, it a small percent of the population does things that are not real smart. Mm -hmm. So I have to protect him. Now he always has every opportunity to, you know, defend himself, and he won't. He won't defend himself. You know. So I've had people kick him, stomp on his head. I was at America's Outdoor Show. I had a guy jump on his back, grabbed his head, and started thrashing him around. I had to knock the guy off him. So I have to be very protected. That's why, yes. we, that's why we set up these cones. Yes. You know, I've had to be very sure. protected because, you know, obviously most people are great. And don't right. get me wrong. I want everybody to understand that. But I have to protect him because I am his keeper. Stay buddy. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. And what, if you can tell us the other kind of alligator, and then we'll let a few of oh, the no visitors problem. here. Uh, no problem. Uh, the, the Chinese alligator. we got the North American alligator, which is Bubba. The Chinese alligator on the verge of extinction, oh, that's so and it's scary. There's a lot, and that's why you know Rob Carmichael puts on this great event every year about helping to save a lot of these endangered crocodilians. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're doing this, you know, Croctoberfest. And Rob started; it was his idea, and it's been fantastic. I it's mean, amazing. you can see the crowds. The crowds mm -hmm. have been great. Right. The people have been just wonderful. The people, the moms, the dads, the kids have just been fabulous. It's a good group here. Yes, it is. So thank you again for sharing him with us, Jim. And thanks, and thanks to my favorite interviewer. Oh, thank you, you know. Jim. <laughs> and he's my favorite alligator. Oh, so we love you a long a good time. Man. We are best friends. <laughs> yes, exactly. We are best friends. Oh, okay, thanks again, Jim. No 
Here we have a smaller alligator. Most alligators are smaller than Bubba. Can you tell us who you are and who your friend is? I'm John Archer with the Chicago Herpetological Society, and this is an about a year and a half old American alligator. Does he have a name? Yeah, we've given him about four today so far, so oh, pick yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> and kids, what would you name him? What do you think? Anyone got an idea? John. John. Is that your name? Uh, no. Okay, I thought maybe you wanted to name him after yourself. Yeah. yeah, so you want to name him after John. Yeah. That's quite an honor, Is that because right? we look the same? <laughs> same personality. He's, better, he's yeah. better looking than I am, actually. <laughs> John Jr. over here. And he bites harder than I do, too. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, uh, what you do. What I do? Yes, with, for, with well, alligators, not what you do when you're not with the well, alligators. Actually, I'm just subbing right now. I'm okay. uh, one of reverses backup people okay. that come in and handle the alligators, and they can't all get here, and, and they don't have enough people. So all and, I'm doing is stepping in for them. And, this is, and how do we know the difference? What's one clue for the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Well, for kids, perverses have a little deal. An alligator begins with A. A stands for apple, and apple is round. A crocodile begins with C, and C stands for carrot and a carrot is pointy. And if you look at the top of their snouts, that alligator's snout is rounded. And if you go over there and look at that crocodile snout, it's pointy. So that's the easiest way to tell a crocodile from an alligator. And also, uh, you Don't won't go near his face, see honey, anyone okay? um, holding a crocodile? Unlikely. I mean, it, there's always exceptions in biology, but very few crocodiles have this kind of temperament that they'll let you hold him for a long time. And please don't pull on his tail, okay? Be soft. Very you want to treat him just like you treat any, just like you want to be your treated. Your own pet or yourself, right? Yeah. We all like to be treated very gently yeah. and kindly, and uh, with lots of love. <laughs> <laughs> are you getting a pretty good reaction from all these kids learning oh, how Oh, kids they are feel always today? love these animals. Yeah, they just always fascinated with them, and they're always good because most of them are very, very nice to them. You can pet them. Yeah. They just be soft. They just have to learn. And the, and the parents are loving them too. The parents like it. The parents have to bring the kids, so they got to be here. That's a clip so we can tell who he is because these animals all look alike. So we have to tag them just like they tag birds. So that's how we can tell what the animal is. Is that it? I can't read it because I don't Thank you for sharing, John and John. Oh, John. We just named him John today. We'll see next next time if that's still his name. <laughs> Works for me. I'll go with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, here we are, Rob and I, at the uh, merchandise offerings mm -hmm. here at Croctoberfest. This gets bigger every year. It does. We got some, you know, really high quality uh, products here that we're now selling that usually you see at bigger zoos and museums. But right. uh, we got yeah, great prices, and all the proceeds once again kind of helps the. Wildlife Discovery Center operate, and also today some of the proceeds are going into uh, donating towards crocodile conservation projects. And can but people buy these other times of year yeah, as well? Yeah, we have them here all year round. So people can come by the Wildlife Discovery Center on, on our days that we're open, right. uh, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 10 to 4, and all these products are, are here for, oh, for sale. That is so cool. As you can see, I'm wearing a few of them, and it's really improved my look, I think. Don't oh, you, Rob? Absolutely. I like oh, it. I like it. Thank yes. You. Now, uh, for all you girls out there, as you can see, I'm making a fashion statement. This matches my outfit, and you go like this. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Rob. <laughs> so there's lots here for you to get, whether you're a boy, a girl, mm -hmm. a mom, a dad. There's stuff for everybody. There's something for everyone. We've got hats and T-shirts. You know, yeah, the hats. Cool hats like this. Nice. You know, these are official Wildlife Discovery Center field my caps. My husband has one. He wears it when he plays golf. We have these cool posters of all the different oh, species yeah. of crocodiles around the world. Oh you know, my goodness. Rubber toys for the, for the guys, you know, these are yeah, really cool. Yeah, right. And cute furry things for the girls, you know. Right, <laughs> right. Hats for the men or women. That's right. Right, right. That's right. right. I think it really makes me look special. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely come on by any time to see this, and it'll be, we'll probably have even more next year at Croctoberfest. So. Absolutely. Yeah. we got a it's whole new line going. coming, yeah. A whole new line, wow. <laughs> okay, now Rob, um, uh, as we're wrapping up <clears throat> today's show, um, you're, you're getting ready to do another little um, uh, lesson here today. We are. We have. Uh, one of our members from the Chicago Herpetological Society, Dan Bevirsha, is going to give a talk on their really amazing crocodile captures in the Chicago area. You wouldn't think of crocodiles being here in Chicago, but people get them as pets and they let them go and they end up in our rivers and ponds and, and he's got some very entertaining stories to tell. <laughs> awesome. Can't yeah. wait to hear them. We'll probably take a little look at some of that. Yep. And we just want to thank um, everyone who comes out and turns out because it really goes for such a great cause. It does. You know, we're like one of the hidden gems of Lake County and certainly right here in Lake Forest, something that we can all be proud of. 
and this is a great event to showcase what we're all about. Okay, it'll be, is it always the same uh, Saturday in October? Uh, no, so, okay. so stay tuned. Uh, our our uh, webpage, um, www.wildlifediscoverycenter.org, mm -hmm. and we'll always have updates. And also on Facebook, so join our Facebook page and uh, we'll keep people updated. Okay, and it, it, so definitely push like. Absolutely, hit the like and uh, we'll, you'll get all the information you need. And uh, this is always on a Saturday in October, mm -hmm. and I think it's a much better event than Oktoberfest because you feel a lot better afterwards. <laughs> you're saving crocodiles. Right, and you're saving Without crocodiles. Yeah, it's a much better cause, and you don't have to drink beer. So, but Crocktoberfest every October. Be sure to join us next year, and in the meantime, be sure to visit the Wildlife Discovery Center. You can still come by here. Absolutely. I mean, we're open year-round, so come okay. on out. All right, so we'll see you for the next Wild, Weird, and Wonderful. Right, Absolutely. Rob? You got it, Maureen.